welcome to Friday Night Sip and Sew. My name is Darlene. I'm with Featherweight Doctor. I'm coming to you tonight from Sandpoint, Idaho, Sand Creek Quilting, home of the Featherweight Doctor. Um, we have a fun show tonight, and it's actually going to be a little more educational than, uh, than most of my Sip and Sews. Um, so I hope you guys uh, are game for some actual education not just sipping <laughs> how's everybody doing it's been a very slow week around here actually i'm pretty thankful that i've had some classes on the books and some quilts on the frame and so things have been good around here but oh sorry i have a mat up here because we're going to be learning a technique and it just fell over. Will you so. see if you're actually alive? Please. Okay, I'm going to go on and just make sure that I am up. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Yep, there I am. All right. Let me bring up my friends. Bring up my feed. And then I'm going to jump onto YouTube. Say hi to my YouTube friends. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. You, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I've been having some graphic work done in the background. So you're going to see a new and improved look for Featherweight Doctor on uh, YouTube, which is kind of fun, very professional. Um, okay, let's see here. All right, oh my goodness, so many comments. Okay, so Peggy's out from Iowa. She says, love learning. Good, Peggy, you're in the right place. <laughs> um, Karen Marie is on. Hi, Oh, hi, Karen, not a Karen. <laughs> I can't wait to see you in June. Debbie, oh, did you guys see my slippers? How do you know I have slippers on? Debbie Sinclair, do you have my store bugged? I totally have slippers on. <laughs> Linda Woods on from Texas. Elizabeth Sowers is on. Oh, she's like, I can sip. <laughs> Hi, Kim from Manitoba. She says it's cold and stormy. That does not sound fun. She says big hi from Northeast Indiana, Miss Fran Lordy. Kathy Hager is on from East Texas. Sandy Reese is on from New Hampshire. Hi, Sandy. Oh, sippers. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. Okay, I was just like, I am wearing slippers. I am a sipper, you know, I, can you see where I got confused? <laughs> Hi, Minnie from California. Katrina's on from Omaha. Hi, darling. How you doing? And Kat is on from Virginia. Okay, so we have Mary's on from Abilene, Kansas over on YouTube. Hi, sweet pea. Red is on from Montana. Oh, Mary's had a hectic week, she said. Can you send a little hectic my way? Because I haven't had a hectic week. Oh, my husband said no. <laughs> Cindy Matthews is on from Michigan. Minnie's on. She said, sipping water, that's fine. We do not regulate what you're sipping. Julie Campbell's on from East Tennessee. Nice to meet you. I think this is the first time you've said hi. Uh, Cindy's on. Hi, Cindy and Jen. Jen, are you there in the background? <laughs> Polly's on from UK. Do you like the new look? Yay. We are getting ready to do our big class. Tomorrow, Polly's going to be on. A couple of gals are going to be on that are viewers. So I thought since we were going to set it up up here anyway, um, we just decided to do this sipping. So from here, uh, I'm glad you like it. Uh, Mary, I think I'm up on Facebook now. It was a little slow to get up, but I'm up now. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yep, let's all have another sip. Darlene's already fumbling with her words. So there you go. Sandy, it's a sweater dress. You can't really see the whole thing. It's cute. I'm a little warm, though, if I'm being honest. Bonnie Pelton is on. She says, I'm present and sipping. All right. Welcome, Bonnie. How's your puppy training going? Karen says, hello from Chile, Ohio. She says, brr, 17 degrees. Cheers and TGIF. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, I know. I have to be in order for the speaker to pick it up. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Bernadette. Unassuming Miss Canada. How are you? We're going to have Paul stalking us in the background. I think, I think you're loud. Okay. My family says I'm being too loud. I'm going to take it down a level. They're party poopers, you guys. 
All right, Marsha's on. Hi, Marsha. Very cool. Oh, yay, Julie says, first time, but not the last. Well, let me introduce you to the, to the crew here. This is about 50, 50 to 85 women, depending on the Friday night. A couple of gentlemen usually join us. We get on. I usually have a glass of wine, a featherweight, and a project. But Julie, tonight we are talking about a quilting technique because last week I kind of blew everybody's mind with my webbing technique and I thought I would do a quick little lesson on webbing a quilt together. So that is what we are going to learn tonight. Um, let's see, oh, Deborah Schmidt is on. Hi, sweet pea. How you doing, Miss Deb? Oh, pa Bonnie says, training is coming along. She has a new puppy, y'all. Can you get me that quilt over there, right on the end of the table, by the way? Um, oh, oh, 11 weeks and training's going good. Way to go, Bonnie, way to go. <laughs> the tribe, she calls it, yeah, I do call you guys the tribe. We're, we're, we're a, a group of, of featherweight enthusiasts. <laughs> Lisa's on. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Lisa says, Lisa Meadows is on from Phoenix. She says, speaking of puppies, found out today that one of ours needs surgery on her back legs. That's sad. That's sad. Bernadette says, oh, he's home. Hi, Paul. Are you eavesdropping in the background? It's Bernadette double fisting her wine glasses again. <laughs> I know, look at my, do you guys see this? Look at my Tula Pink of Fat Quartered Bundles. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Bonnie, you have a dog door that helps, I'd say, for sure. All right, so let me show you what we were working on last week. Thanks for indulging me and letting me say hi to some of the tribe. Mel and Joe, are you out there? You haven't said hi yet. So last week, okay, since Julie's new, we have to give her the 411. Julie, I am the biggest featherweight fan out there. I am also the biggest Tula Pink fan. So even though my store is a featherweight shop, we will always have Tula Pink fabric in here, just so you know. So last week I was um, webbing, I don't know if you're familiar with that term, webbing together a quilt uh, that I had made all the blocks and I was putting it together and I was using a technique called webbing and everybody would look like the emoji with the mind blowing because they couldn't figure out what I was doing. So I thought I would do like a light version of what I was doing, but let me show you all. Hi, Julie, Judy, thank, <laughs> thanks for joining us. You are welcome to cross stitch while you watch. <laughs> Pamela's on from, from Tennessee. Hi, Pamela. Oh, Becky Kennedy's on, hello, hello. All right, yes, um, Bernadette says all those featherweights. Y'all, the orphanage is overflowing. They need to go home. They need to go to someone's home other than me. So I was working on this quilt last week, and then I posted a picture of the technique that, see how there's gaps? Because you, you build rows, and then once your rows are together, you go row to row to row building the quilts. And so it's called tech, uh, the technique called webbing. So what I did was I made a little like cheat quilt today. And Reagan's gonna come over in just a second. Um, oh, your feet is skipping. Uh, you might need to refresh if your feet is skipping. Hi, Gloria Ann. <laughs> you didn't get your notice, what? Some of my gals, put a notification on their phone so they never miss a live. Cause I'm on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, pretty much without fail at four o'clock Pacific. Uh, what about, yes, the black long bed is for sale. First 301 I've ever sold out of the store. Y'all, I'm such a fan of the 301 and I realize it's like a totally different creature than my 221s, but man, they're fast and they are, their stitches are perfectly straight, just like the featherweight. So an opportunity, I was on a buying trip in Western Washington last week and an opportunity presented itself to buy one and I thought, I'm buying it. So uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so Ray, come on over. So all I did 
was I whacked up a bunch of four and a half inch squares. And what I'm gonna do is Ray's gonna hold, hi Ray, say hi to everybody. <laughs> Ray's gonna hold the board for me, perfect, my dear. And I'm just gonna lay these out on the board in a particular layout. And then I'll show you how I web them together because there is a very specific procedure I go through. I, I'm not really caring how this goes. But you know how you go through a bunch of trouble on your design wall to lay something out? You want to make sure that it goes together the same way. But when you do the webbing technique, you actually um, make stacks. I'm going to show you how I make my stacks. So we're going to pretend these are blocks. They're not blocks. They're just, well, they're tiny little blocks, I guess. Um, I, do, I will have... Mary says, love my 301. Um, I will be carrying 301 parts. They're on the way. I don't have them in just yet, but they're coming. Beep. <laughs> She's like, Mom, I'm going to bite you. <laughs> I have to scooch these over. All right. So this is what we're doing. Oh, still, I know Miss Judy Colby. The penguin quilt actually went home with me because I wasn't getting around to working on it here. So um, it's at home now. It's my, um, it's for when I'm home and I want to sew. So there you go. Okay, this, sorry, babe. How's it going? Hey, Tyler. You might say you're going to this is what happens when I'm in the front of the store. People just come in. It's all right. No big deal. Except it's my buddy who didn't bring the cutest baby with him in the whole world, so I might forgive him. I might not. Okay. One second. Oh, Missy's sipping at her brother's house. Nice. Let's see. Minnie says, I always feel like I'm cheating on my featherweight when I sew on my other machines. <laughs> oh, Polly says you're doing an excellent job. Right. Think I have like seven machines. Think about how my feather rates feel. Okay, here we go. We're almost. So, we're about to do some. You don't have to hold that forever, I promise. <laughs> you should have got the easel over. Like that would have been easier. It would have been? Oh. Okay. All right, so here's my. I'm basically going to just make. A four, a four by four, 16 inch pillow top. That's what we're making. <laughs> you guys are cute. Hi, Franny. Okay, hi, Debbie Kendall Carlson. Yes, tomorrow the class is starting at 9 a.m. Pacific. Correct. All right, let's see, hold on. Blue, uh, Polly says, oh, I found a box of 301 accessories. The 301 is a high slant shape machine. In my grandmother's drawer, some are black side parts. That's fun. I don't, didn't even know or had heard of one until you showed yours. Fun! Cindy Matthew says, mini, that's funny. Uh, work between three machines, the featherweight for, for the most piecing, and two other modern machines for bigger projects. Very fun. Okay, so we have our rows and our columns. You guys see it? Okay, so the webbing technique is basically we're going to make some stacks. So we're basically going to sew this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to that one, and this one to that one. And then I'm going to stack the other rows so that they're all in order so I can put my design wall away. So you guys ready for the stacking? I post-it notes in, in a pen is a good thing to have. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to, actually, let me think about this for a second. We're going to start at the bottom. And all I'm going to do is come over here and flip this here. And I'm going to put a pin. I'm going to put a pin on my stitching line so I don't get confused because there isn't any real specific pattern here. I don't want to get confused. So make sure this is a white on white, that I have my white right sides together. Okay, I'm, just, I'm making stacks. You guys can see here, I'm stacking from the bottom to the top. She 
she's like, she's not appreciating me. Do you guys see this? <laughs> okay. So now I have this stack of blocks and I have the pins on my sewing side and I'm gonna label this row one and two. And put a sticky note on it over here. All right, now for this, for the next row, which is gonna be three, I'm gonna make sure that I stack the bottom one ones on top so I end with my first piece on top. Okay? And I'm gonna label this one row three. Put them all in order over here. And so same with the with row four. This needs to be on the bottom. Aren't white on white tonals hard to see which way is the right side? You can go. Okay, and I'm going to say row four. Okay, now, if I'm, if this is one of those transient projects, like my penguin quilt, which kind of comes to me, with me home, it comes to me back to the office, it comes with me, I'll pin my rows, my blocks together, so that way I don't, with my little cheater note on them, so they don't, get un, you know, un, out of order, I should say. So same here, so drop three. Okay, let's come to my first seam. <laughs> let's see. Okay, I'm just checking my comments. I think I'm gonna grab one of my school bells that is for sale. So this one is the shinier one. Um, the collector's edition school, school bell, the 34 school bell, hasn't come in yet. That's still coming in. And we should have made it today, but it didn't. So I imagine it'll be tomorrow. Let me get this threaded up here. Oops. So tell me what y'all been doing this week. Other than trying to stay in because it's so cold. So last week when you guys saw me on camera with the, um, with my stacks, that's what was confusing everybody is you didn't know how I got to the stack. Um, basically, I had started that quilt back in Redmond before we moved, and I made sure my stacks were labeled and filed appropriately in order. And so then I was just slamming together my, um, my blocks because I didn't have to think because I knew everything was in order. And I will say, one of my fans, I took that picture of the quilt, I think it was on Monday's post, I took that um, I took that picture and then someone pointed out that I had one of my blocks turn the right wrong way she was right and I'm like do I change it do I not change it I think I'm not gonna change it all right so this is my row one and two this is my bottom oh hold on I did this in the wrong order do, 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 do. we always have to end with the top piece there we go okay now we're in the right order. So I'm gonna just sew my blocks together real quick. And now, here is the deal with the webbing. You do not cut any threads. You leave it all attached, okay? So notice I'm not trimming any threads. I am just webbing or stitching them all together, chain stitching them all together. It's actually really important that you don't 
undo the threads because uh, it will mess up your order because you need everything to stay in the same order that you stacked it. <laughs> a big freeze tonight down in Mississippi, Mel, or are you away from home? Ooh, Kathy Zoka finished a new quilt top, a mess. And Kathy is working on a t-shirt quilt, wasn't paying attention to the time. That's okay, thanks for joining us. Let's see, uh-oh, Mary says, going nuts at work on managing the store for six to eight weeks and down employees because of COVID. That stinks. Um, Cindy Matthews is working on a queen size quilt for a wedding. She said weeding, but I'm pretty sure she needs wedding quilt. Um, and, and started the baby. You got two quilts going at the same time? Good job. I can't balance it like that. And poor Minnie's under quarantine. That's sad. Um, Polly in UK said she had a tire blowout after hitting a pothole. So unfortunately, my car is out of action. And now I have no excuse to finish UFOs. <laughs> That's right, girl. You're out of excuses. Minnie says, I tried to piece on my Elna. I always go back to my featherweight, apologizing the whole time for, the, for letting a younger model take me away. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. <gasps> Brittany, or should I say Stephanie, is on. Hello, hello. She's basting and quilting three table runners bef before the baby gets home. Where's the baby? What'd you do with your baby? <laughs> oh, 20s. Yikes. In um, 20s in Mississippi, Mel? Jo that's cold for you guys. Peggy says, I have done this technique before. just didn't know how it was called webbing. <laughs> Light bulb moment. Good. Good, good, Miss Peggy. Oh, uh, Becky Kennedy said, a big freeze in Louisiana. That's not good. <laughs> oh, hi, Shan. Okay, go back to dinner. Love you, too. I'll see you in a few weeks. Oh, everybody take a drink. I just ran out of bobbin thread. Julie, if you're still watching, this is a tribe thing. We sip if I miss sew something and have to use a seam ripper. And we sip if I uh, run out of bobbin thread. <laughs> so I found, actually I didn't find, Reagan found this gal on Instagram. I'm still trying to get a hold of her. She has like the coolest stickers. Like I won at the game of bobbin chicken and some other stuff. And they're hilarious and a little naughty, so that's okay. But I'm trying to get her on my show. I don't know. She's got 6,000 Instagram followers, so she probably won't want anything to do with me. But I'm going to try. Woo! Ready? Can you hand that to me? a dollar for every time I was running a bobbin and got talking to someone and then gummed up with thread my whole that's why it didn't stop sewing I didn't disengage the silver hand knob hello oh funny when you run the machine properly how much better it works <laughs> Hi, Deanne from Windy, North Dakota. Thanks for joining us tonight. Boy, I feel like we kind of skated out of the bad weather this week. It's actually been, we got like some snow flurries on, gosh, was that Wednesday, right? But nothing terrible. You guys are all talking about freezing temperatures in places you shouldn't have freezing temperatures. That's not good. Sandy is tacking down the binding on a quilt, so it sounds like hand work. I'm actually so looking forward to coming to Arizona this next trip <laughs> because the weather has been so, we'll say, snowy white around here, and I'm like, I need some sun. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, Mary, I got your email. I I have... <laughs> you guys, Julie gets it. She says, one sip of wine down. Awesome. Julie, you're going to fit in really well around here. <laughs> Minnie says, my daughter, who was just learning to quilt, sent me a picture of your post last week asking me why it wasn't sewn together. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Minnie's daughter. <coughs> no rain there for seven days? What the what? Over in Western Washington? Missy, that never happens. Mel and Joe had a good week. She had a play date with Becky Kennedy. Well, that's always fun. Nice. Randy says, my son will never ask me to dog sit ever again. What did you do to the dog? What can go, whatever could go wrong has. Did you lose him? I was dog sitting some friend's um, puppy once and it got away from me. And I chased that damn dog, excuse my language, two and a half miles in flip flops until someone took pity on me and actually offered me the lunch meat out of their grocery sack to taunt the dog over so I could catch it. I almost rang its neck when I picked it up. And you know, guys know how much I like dogs. But I just couldn't be the one that lost the dog, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, Deanne in South Dakota said that she's learning how to edge to edge on her embroidery machine. Well, that sounds fun. And... You guys always are so busy. Cindy and Jen have to share that Jen and I made Valentine print hand warmers from your holiday gift suggestions. What a good idea. <gasps> Negative 18 degrees this morning in Michigan. Good Lord. Uh, so I have so many thank yous. We've had so many thank yous. Jen had a blast. That's a great idea. Holiday. I love that. The idea of it being Valentine's Day fabric. Very cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Franny says, dog's fine. The house, not so much. Well, you didn't lose it. So not everything that could have happened, happened. Hi, Greta. Oh, no. North Carolina, hi. Blowing snow, doing a big stitch by hand. No, hand stitching is a four-letter word. Sample for a teaching and class, sipping hard cider. Well, you're in good company, girl. Welcome. <laughs> Can I, Gloria Ann, in Ontario, you're asking for a negative 18. Oh, it's negative 30. Negative 18 is balmy, right? Okay, so I finished, finally, quilting the first row. Notice I am not cutting anything apart. I want it to stay in my, oh, nope, miss. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, well, hold on. Maybe I have one more to go. Hold on. We are always the utmost of professionalism here at Featherweight Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Kennedy, I like how you think. She says, you should come down here for a visit. Mel and I can get... You the best king cake you've ever had. If I ever come to New Orleans, Becky Kennedy, I am going to Cafe Du Monde and I am having beignets. And there would have to be two of us because Reagan would not let me go without her. Come on, you guys. French donuts? I mean, please. Please. Okay, now, now I actually have four. Four squares and I'm going to pick up so what else I'm going to do go to the lower camera so they can see what I'm doing babes. you're probably already there but so what I'm going to do is open this up and I'm simply going to grab my row three and since I stacked everything properly I'm going to know that this first block is my top block and I'm just going to line up and keep going oh son of a gun okay I messed up everybody take a sip Hi, Nancy. <laughs> All right, I just I just did the cardinal sin of the featherweight. I did not hold my threads when I started out and I lost my top thread, so let me. Oh, 
we thread here. I know better than that. Hi, Sandy Martin. How's it going, girl? We missed you. Italian, wait, 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 wait what, Polly? There's Italian donuts? What? Do tell. How could Italian donuts be better than beignets? They're little puffy dough balls filled with cream. Tell me about Italian donuts. <laughs> Cindy Matthews. <laughs> yep, that deserves another sip, she says. So I was showing someone, my little beginning student today, who has like three babies and the fourth is on the way. She's really convicted about learning to sew. She really wanted to have something for herself. Uh, yeah. She is, um, I was teaching her how to make nine patches and we were webbing them together like this. So you can use the same kind of webbing technique for block construction too. All right, so now we have, just so everybody knows where we're at, we have three. So we're gonna do our fourth and final row. So I'm gonna pick up my stack. And again, I stacked this properly so I know that my top piece on my stack is actually my top piece of my quilt. If it this was like an actual quilt, like a patterned quilt, I would totally, it would be more obvious because you can kind of tell which quilt block comes next, but because this is just big empty blocks, Peggy, a lot of sipping tonight. Sorry. All right, let's see. Polly says, <laughs> Cindy, we are not going to be slothed by the end of the show, lady. We're we can regulate. I should really stop messing things up so you guys have to stop sipping now. <laughs> I'd love to grab a vintage but <laughs> I know. Polly, tell us about the donuts, the Italian donuts. <laughs> Peggy says it's more fun to sip a lot. <laughs> Franny says I use a little scrap of piece to start and stop so that, yes, so it doesn't, yes. That would be, I, I haven't done the little starter pieces. Um, but it would stop me from losing my threads if I forgot to hold on to them, so. You guys, I'm so excited about my class tomorrow. I think it's probably been since the spring since I did a virtual class because of the move and the build out and all the things. But this one filled up pretty darn fast, so I think I'm going to be offering them more regularly. Okay, so now I have my, my four patch. Notice how no colors are touching, so yay, I did it right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to fold one row over on the next. And I'm just going to decide right now that the second row is going to fold up. So when I go to do the next row, I know that it folds down and I'm going to press when all is said and done. But I'm gonna make some bigger passes right now. <laughs> no problem, Elizabeth. She says, thanks for taking the time to teach us this technique. I learned this technique, I probably was pretty early in my quilting journey. I went seven years uh, a quilter without any formal classes, and then I started taking classes. So it's probably in that seven to 10 year 
time period. And I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday where I learned this. I learned, it was in downtown Seattle, there was a quilt shop in the Pike Place Market, the famous Pike Place Market, and it was called Undercover Quilts, and I had, t it was a, it was a technique class for something else, it wasn't, it wasn't this webbing, but the instructor, that's how she put the quilt together, and it was like, ding, like the light went on, and I was like, I'm never putting another quilt together any other way. Because I like the idea that not being kind of strapped to a design board, you know, moving forward. Bye, Franny. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so I got one row to row, and now I'm going to sew the next one together. And I'm going to look underneath to see which way I sewed my, my seams to make sure I get them going the same direction, so I don't have a little hiccup on the inside of my quilt. Oh, the Italian donuts are super light and fluffy, Polly says. And they are the size of your hand. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Oh, and there's dreamy douse in cinnamon. Come on. Okay, we need to stop talking about donuts. There's no place to get good donuts here. And you guys are going to make my mouth water. So stop talking about <laughs> donut talking is banned. Because <laughs> when I was in Western Washington this weekend, and there's this place called Sunrise Bakery or Sunrise Donuts, and they literally line their donuts and crack because you can't you can't you can't just eat one you can't just eat two you have to have three they're so amazing and i did not get there this weekend so donut talk is banned we're not talking about donuts peggy this technique does get the rows together quicker it that well you're also not can you show the lower camera for it a second is. so you're also not pressing anything so that's why it seems like it's going faster i am going to go over to the iron, and I am going to press this whole thing flat before I quilt it, obviously. I mean, obviously. Um, but that's why it seems like it's going so much quicker is because you're not, um, you're not pressing the rows as you go. <laughs> Wait, what? Elizabeth says I would be strapped to my living room floor. What's that? Oh, hold on. You must have, I've had some of the fabulous, oh, you can still have the, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's see, I love webbing, which means you don't have to pin as much. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Sandy Martin, we're not talking about donuts anymore, Sandy Martin. She says. Oh, do donut. Talk about donuts. Yeah, do not talk about donuts. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Sandy Martin says, LOL, my dad loved donuts, and they moved to a little town, no donuts. The nearest donut shop was three hours away. That's terrible. Yes, Miss Kathy in SoCal, I do have the metal quarter-inch foot without the guide on my machine. It's my favorite one. Actually, having um, the new students that are technique, you know, challenge because they're new has been really good for me because when you've been quilting as long as I have, there are just things that you do that you don't think about doing. Um, you just do them. And so having to slow down and break it down into smaller digestible sections for my new, my new students has been really good because it's been a good refresher course for me. Oh, <laughs> Elizabeth says, not strapped to your wall board. No wall board here, just my living room floor. I know. So I do not have a, other than in the filming studio, I don't have a design wall at home. I don't have a wall that I can get to. So do you guys want another little tip or trick how to have a design wall without a physical wall? So what I do 
because this was in my Redmond studio. I didn't have a wall either. So what I did was go to your local long armor and they usually have batting tubes uh, hanging around or go to the Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby and get one of their home deck uh, center rolls, the like big toilet paper rolls basically. And then what I do is I go and I buy like at one of like the big box stores like Joann's, I buy two yards of their felt on a roll. And then I grab my batting roll and my two yards of felt on a roll and I staple the felt on a roll to the batting roll. And then I can, I have hooks in my ceiling and I hook it up into the ceiling and I can use the design wall in the middle of the room. And then when I'm done, or if I'm in the mid, if I'm in a mid uh, quilt procedure, I can actually take it down and roll it up and roll my pieces into the batting, into the felt so that they don't move. And that way, whenever I am at my next location to be able to continue sewing, I just unroll my, my batting roll and I'm ready to go. It's awesome. <laughs> Sandy, uh, Cindy Matthews says, I chain piece rows, but I've never done the whole top that way. Well, girl, this is your challenge. Hi, John. How's it going? 17 degrees in Boston right now. You have me beat by just a smidge. I think it's like 30... 36 outside. So we're, we're at least above freezing. Do you have any big craft shows coming up, John? <laughs> I don't know where the closest donut place is. There is a place here in downtown Sandpoint called Murphy's, and they say that they have donuts, but um, I actually haven't been in there yet. All right, here's my little look exactly how we laid it out so there you go all right i don't have a um i was gonna quilt this but i just realized i don't have an iron plugged in to to uh to iron it so we'll just chat how does that sound so john <laughs> sandy says <laughs> 16 hour drive just to go get a donut for him Sandy, your dad was nuts. Ooh, Sandy Reese says 13 degrees in New Hampshire. You know, honestly, being a child that grew up in New Hampshire in Connecticut, moving here reminds me so much of my childhood because I remember, like, cars getting, you know, buried by the plows on the city streets, and I remember having snow taller than I was, and... I mean, if it, it's a good thing that like living in North Idaho doesn't have a lot of humidity because that was one of the reasons, well, not one of the reasons my dad took a job. Um, he took a, a post with the military in Seattle. So that's why we moved to the Seattle area from Connecticut, New Hampshire. Um, but, <clears throat> but one of the perks of doing that was that the summers didn't have any humidity. And I'm very thankful that we do not have the humidity here because it's that would be bad i'm not a humidity gal first of all i have curly hair and it would be <laughs> it would not be good <laughs> no i am not sipping whiskey i have some white wine tonight but i do like whiskey <laughs> you know what my favorite is uh the crown the apple crown royal I don't indulge in that very much because that you can't can't indulge in that very much. You get silly in a red hot hurry. <laughs> I can't believe Sandy Martin, your dad used to drive sixteen hours and plan his donut stops. <laughs> yeah, and there's you, Brittany. I know in Arizona wearing sandals every day. I get it. I get it. So the last time I went to um, Arizona in the middle of the winter, I was all excited because I thought. Here's my chance. I'm going to pull out my summer clothes and I'm going to wear my open toed shoes and all of that. Nope. I was freezing because even though it was in the mid 60s, mid 60s in Arizona is too cold for open toed shoes. Too cold. 
hot blueberry tea. That does sound good. So let me see. So that's our webbing technique. Maybe next week I'll do some free motion quilting and give this little pillow topper some life. <laughs> Kim says, apple crown total is made in two hours from here in, oh, really? Where are you again, Kim? Aren't you in New York? I thought you were in New York. In Gimli. <laughs> Sandy, I bet your dad was worth it. That's awesome. <laughs> Polly says, NC Neot's whiskey is amazing. And I went to the distillery in Dumfries. I love going on distillery tours because there's usually uh, tasting involved. Mel, how's Joe doing? Is he watching? Hi, hi Joe. Mm. Peggy, I do. Oh, you're in Manitoba. That's right. So Crown Royale is made in Canada? Did I not know that? Did I know that? I didn't know. It. Well, I don't think I knew that. But you're a lucky lady. Um, so Peggy, yes, there are classes uh, scheduled in Omaha. We are doing a... There's going to be another Featherweight Spa Day, but there also is going to be a two-day quilt-as-you-go technique class. We're going to make a big table topper. I'm so excited. I got sick in the middle of making the sample, and so that's why you haven't seen the sample yet. But it's going to be a two-day quilt-as-you-go technique, technique class in Omaha. And I don't have my phone because it's one of my cameras, but I believe it's the second week in June. I'll be back. Now, see, Sandy Reese, I tried the peanut butter whiskey. That was not my favorite. Uh, but I am really not a peanut butter person. My husband loves peanut butter. Like, you know that show Ted Lasso, Lasso on Apple Plus? He's a, an American football coach that gets hired. It's a, real, it's a true story, apparently. Gets hired in, um, in the UK to go coach the 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 european soccer which is, or football which is actually soccer and he always has an open jar of peanut butter on his kitchen counter at all times that's my husband he loves peanut butter like just big old finger in the peanut butter as he's walking by oh no thank you no thank you let's see minnie says frozen honey whiskey is the best i have not tried that I have not tried that. MC means, oh, has a proper warm chested kick. <laughs> Polly, if I ever came to England, we'd have to tear things up. <laughs> I know Mary Carnes, where is Odie? I'll have to send her an, a message to make sure she's okay. <clears throat> Let's see, Judy Colby says, how do we find out about the class? The class in Omaha? If you call Celtic Quilter, they are the wonderful classroom that hosts me when I, I'm in Omaha twice a year. So I will have a three day, three day event um, this June, the beginning of June. I think it's actually the, technically the second week. And then I'll be back again in the fall. I believe November is when we put it on the calendar. I know, Sunny isn't always on, but Odie's always on. So I'll have to check and see where Odie is. Peggy Morrison, hi Peggy Morrison. She says, went to the Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynn, I think it's Lynchburg, not Lynnburg, Tennessee, was going to be sampling at the end of the tour. I thought, hmm, this was a dry county and it was lemonade? Well, that's not good. <laughs> you thought you were gonna get to sample the product and they gave you lemonade? Talk about disappointment. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, peach crown. Wait, stop it. There's a peach crown, Brittany? Hmm. Hmm. In iced tea, that would be, that would be like dangerous on a hot day. For sure. Uh, Mary says, I'm planning a trip to Kathy's in June. And for sure, we'll be seeing you guys too. <gasps> Yay, that sounds fun. Cool. I like it. <laughs> Cindy says, 
we should invade Omaha in a good way. No, you guys, you have to come here for quilt camp. I haven't put the information out yet, but we are hosting a three-day quilting retreat here in Sandpoint, Idaho. If you guys are road tripping, you're coming to see me in Sandpoint, Idaho. I've got the room reserved. I'm gonna be putting out um, information soon about quilt camp. It's actually two full days of sewing and there's gonna be a welcome party um, <clears throat> Thursday. They'll be sewing Friday, Saturday, and then you guys will be out on Sunday. So that's, we are definitely doing quilt camp. I just need to get my ducks in a row. So if you guys are road tripping, you're coming here to see me. <laughs> Cindy Matthew says, oh, uh oh, road trip, I'm there. Oh wait, I can, I have to redo my passport. <laughs> Yes. No, Cindy, Michigan is in the country. You're okay. <laughs> Minnie says, although if I were in negative degree weather, I would have a hot toddy in my hand all the time. Amen, sister. I know Sandy Martin. Quilt camp. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Quilt camp. Quilt camp. We're not bougie. We're not going on a quilting cruise. We're having quilt camp because this is North Idaho. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Kathy Soka Odie's not on. Sounds like we have a party in June. Yes, you do, Mary Carnes. <gasps> Odie, have you been on the whole time? We were worried about you. Were your ears burning? <laughs> <coughs> All right, Mel, you and I just have quilt camp every day on June 15th. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, you're so much fun. And this was a 15 minute discussion on whiskey. So you are either all my best friends or maybe we should join another club together. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh-oh, June 15th, no. Oh, you came on 15 minutes ago, okay. <laughs> Polly, you need to redo your passport too, girl. Why don't you get your car fixed? You tire. <laughs> a welcome party with peach whiskey. Stop it. Oh, hi, Mom, on your cruise, speaking of bougie. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> my mother-in-law and a couple of their friends, including my good friend Kathy and their friend Diane, are all on a cruise for 17 days to Hawaii and back. I don't know, that sounds like a long cruise. That, you'd have to like pace yourself with food because you'd like put on 30 pounds if you weren't careful. It's a long cruise. Bye Kathy Zoka, stay warm yourself. <gasps> George, hi George in Maryland, how are you? Oh, she said June 15th is my wedding anniversary, Nice. Bye, Pauline. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Polly, she goes, featherweights plus quilting plus whiskey plus donuts. What's not to love? <laughs> Sorry, you're so funny. Oh, no. Odie, you sold your Camaro today? So I'm sorry. That must be hard. I'm sorry you had a bad day, Miss Odie. All right, you, you guys. I better jump off before they throw me off. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. You made my night. Uh, I will be back on Monday with Ask the Doctor. If you guys have any questions on quilting, um, or uh, the feather rates or quilting with your feather rate, then go ahead and email info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor.com, and I will put your question on the air. <laughs> Odie, <laughs> but I have two, two, two money. That's a girl after my own heart. <laughs> and honestly, a Camaro for a two, 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 not a bad trade. It really isn't. Thanks, Cindy and Jen. Thanks, Marsha. Have a good night. <laughs> Mel. <laughs> Bye, Peggy. Bye, Mom, Kathy, and Diane. <laughs> Bye, Sandy Martin. Thanks, Minnie, for joining us. 
Thanks all. I'll see you on Monday at 4 o'clock Pacific right here on Facebook and